Hey everyone, it's me again, Brittany, and I'm here today to show you guys my December TBR. Um, this one's different. This one's definitely different. First of all, I don't own almost any of these books. I own one of them. So, that thumbnail. Amazing, right? Secondly, it's a booktubers pick my TBR. TBR. Which is something I've never really done, and it was kind of out of my comfort zone because I feel like we all know that I just, I don't, I don't talk to other booktubers very often unless it's like Mika. In general, I went for the booktubers that I've been watching the most of recently, booktubers that I've always watched a lot of, and here we are. I am hoping to read these this month, um, apparently all through my library because I literally do not own <laughs> any of the books they recommended. So let's actually start with the one that Mika, who is Mika from Mika August, picked for me. I will actually also leave all of the uh, booktubers that I asked for recommendations linked down below just in case you guys want to check out their channels. They're all obviously ones that I like and enjoy, so if you want to check them out, that's cool. Originally she recommended to me Legendborn, which was expected because it's one of her faves right now, but then when I told her I was kind of in the mood for romance, she was like, girl, I got you, read this. And she recommended Burn For Me by Ilana Andrews, and this is definitely, I mean, she told me it was a mass market paperback romance and the summary for it really, it feels like it, but she says she loves it so I'm here to try it. I mean, I'm not here to discriminate against romance, I just want to try it out. So it's basically about Nevada who is a detective and she's kind of been put on a suicide mission to bring in a prime and a prime is like the biggest magic user, like the head honcho magic user that can burn anyone alive. So you can imagine she's not very excited about having to bring him in for a very violent crime case or multiple crimes that he's being charged for but before she gets to do that she's actually kidnapped by um, a dark magic wielding billionaire <laughs> named Rogue and he's also trying to catch this prime and he's like she's gonna get in the way so I gotta kidnap her and she's initially kind of like mad about it and then she realizes like hmm, maybe I don't want to run away because I'm actually super attracted to him and we can make this work and in his point of view she's kind of getting under his skin because um, she keeps like making him feel things which is just so rude of her because he knows what feeling brings to the table, to the equation, and he kind of has to focus. I'm excited. <laughs> I mean, I, I feel like it's going to be a lot of fun, so I don't know if this one is on audio. I know, like, I'm, I'm not sure normally where, like, mass market paperbacks lie on it, but I am going to be trying to find all of these first on Libby, which is the app that I normally use for listening to audiobooks. It goes through your library, your local county library. Yeah, I'll, I'll be trying all these books there first. And since I was kind of on a romance feeling kick. I actually did end up asking Riley Marie on booktube to pick out a book for my TBR. She, I feel like, is a queen of romance. I love all her videos in general and all her recommendations in general, but like I would definitely turn to her for romance as well, obviously. When I reached out to her she gave me a couple of options again, but I actually chose, well, I chose this one because I was really excited by the name because I... I mean, let me just tell you the name. It's Phoenix Unbound by Grace Draven, and I mean, I just, I've always really liked Phoenix's. Phoenix Eye, I, it's a thing. And this one sounds so interesting. I'm actually really, really glad that I went for it. Basically, every single year, there's a teeth to be given to the Empire. One woman, one maiden, I believe, has to be given to the Empire to be burned alive in front of the masses just for their entertainment. And for the past five years, Jolene, I don't know how to pronounce her name, Jolene has actually been this sacrifice and that's because she has a spell, a power to be able to survive question mark or come back to life question mark, we don't really know, the burning so that she can go through an illusion again and be re-elected so that she can spare her people from having to give up a person, a maiden, every single year. Very selfless, right? I mean she's a great person. And then this gladiator dude, the most famous gladiator who's enslaved, he decides to kind of take advantage of the fact that he knows and he's seen through her illusion and he's gonna blackmail her unless she can free him. And like he doesn't tell her that he also wants to be freed because he wants to go back to his clan to take his rightful place as chief, I believe. It sounds like a good time, I don't know. I don't know much about romance, so delving into romance is kind of like 
it's a whole new world. <laughs> now I didn't want all romance to be on this list, so there are a few that aren't. The next person that I asked for a recommendation for is Ali from Hardback Quarter. Love her channel. I feel like I, I can't keep saying that because that'll get repetitive, but she actually recommended to me to read Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco, and I, I hadn't. I hadn't picked it up yet, and I didn't even know. I mean, okay, the thing is, is I kind of knew that it had been out, but I didn't put two and two together. I actually haven't read anything by Carrie Maniscalco, so this one actually seems like a pretty cool place to start. I think that in general she has, you know, pretty good reviews overall. This one's following Amelia and Vittoria, who are twins, and they are witches that are hiding amongst humans. They are pretending to be humans and can't be discovered as witches, and they have like their normal I believe Sicilian restaurant that they have with their family, but one day Vittoria doesn't show up to the restaurant and Amelia gets concerned so she goes searching for her and she finds her desecrated body and it's like beyond decomposed, like it's it doesn't, it shouldn't be that way, you know? She's dead, obviously. And so Amelia decides to go on a path for vengeance and she is going to do whatever it takes to figure out who killed her sister and avenge her murder. And she's even gonna use dark magic, which is highly forbidden, but if she needs to she's gonna do it. And along the way she actually runs into Wrath, who is one of the princes of hell. But don't worry, he's actually been sent on the same mission because there's been many murders of young women in the same fashion and he's been sent from hell to figure out what's going on. And yeah, we don't really know, I guess, if he's going to be on the good side or the bad side, but we do know that there's probably going to be a romance. So <laughs> I think that sounds really fun and exciting. I feel like the Princes of Hell have really been making an appearance in books lately. Is that just me? But like, I'm here for it. I, it's, it's interesting to me, definitely. So yeah, thanks to Ali. After that, I actually went ahead and asked Mayana from Mayana Reads to give me a recommendation, and she gave me Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. So I was interested when she mentioned Blood and Ash, especially when she said it was more along the lines of a romance, so I'm here for it. Basically, we're following Poppy, who is the maiden. The maiden is like this, this being, this person, not a being, this title that they have in their kingdom, and this girl, not by choice, Choice, really, not always, um, has to be the maiden, a very pure person that once they turn, I believe, 19, they get put in front of the gods to decide whether, you know, they're worthy or not. And they have to stay pure that entire time. But Poppy, she's not necessarily, like, down with this. Like, she'll do it for her her kingdom, but she doesn't really want to be the maiden. She actually would rather be a guard and be seeking vengeance or, you know, just in general, getting the people that killed her family. So she's not really all for it already. And then Hawk, an honor-bound guard, pops into her, what's the word I'm looking for? Re retinue? Revenue? The people around her. And he's now gonna have her question everything because maybe it isn't as it should be. Maybe she shouldn't just be a maiden because they're telling her she should be a maiden. And also he's really, really hot and she's definitely questioning the whole like having to stay very pure until that birthday thing. So all of this is going on, she's having an internal conflict of her own, but a fallen kingdom is rising from the ashes, ignored by the gods, that was never thought to rise again, is currently rising, and it wants to get her kingdom because they believe that they have a right to it. So, you know, she's going through a lot of stuff and now she's probably gonna have to try and save her kingdom, which is that gonna mean staying a maiden or is it gonna mean becoming a guard? I guess, I guess we'll have to find out. I'm excited though, because Mayana sounds like she really, really loved it. Mika was even telling me that she's been really interested in it as well, but she was waiting because I guess there's gonna be a lot of books coming out. Like it's a trilogy, but I think they're coming out pretty quickly, which is cool, so yeah. Now the last booktuber that I actually reached out to to give me a book for my TBR is actually Emma from Emma Books. And this was, I mean, a mildly surreal experience for me because I've been watching Emma Books since before I was ever a booktuber, so it was kind of cool to be able to be like, slide in the DMs, I guess, and be like, can you pick a book for my TBR? And she gave a lot of really great recommendations, but I ended up deciding on Hello Girls by Brittany Cavallero and Emily Henry, namely because I have already read books by Brittany Cavallero. I've read The Study in Charlotte, um, and The Study, A Study in Charlotte, and I know I really like her writing, and I was actually really intrigued by this book. I actually, I believe, <laughs> I think I was actually really interested in the book because I remembered seeing 
and I talk about it when it first came out so very full circle but I I chose that one and I am not regretting it because it has to do with two best friends and I have been craving a best friend story for a little while. I think it just has to do with the fact that I'm not really seeing my friends very often. I'm very bad at reaching out to my friends. I just am forgetful. So I've been kind of missing the friendship thing and yeah, I, I've been wanting a best friend story and this is kind of what this one is. We have Winona and Lucille who meet in front of the police station because they are both trying to decide whether they need to turn in their family members. Winona's life is tragic in the opposite way that Lucille's is because she has money, she seems like she has the perfect family, but in reality her father's locking up the cabinet and not letting her eat and beating her, I believe. There's bruises in places people can't find, basically. And Lucille is tragic in maybe the opposite way because she has to deal with a mother who maybe isn't being much of a mother and a brother who is a drug dealer and she never has the money that she earns as a waitress. Um, it seems like it's getting taken by her family before she can ever save it or anything like that. And she's just, she's done with it. She knows that they both know that they need to leave their lives to be able to start a new one. Um, and maybe they're gonna have to do a little bit of crime to get there because they need $3,000 and maybe a stolen convertible to get them from Michigan to Vegas. I'm here for it. I mean, I live in Vegas. I get it. There's some bad that has to be done before the good can happen, I guess, and it just sounds like it's gonna be a really cool friendship story about two girls meeting each other and really just like bonding and I don't know if they'll be able to escape, but at least they'll find each other, so I'm hyped. And then besides that, there is one more book on my TBR, the only one that I physically own. It's this one, and it's actually not one that I had someone else pick out. For me. It's a book that I'm going to be buddy reading. I asked Mika if she wanted to buddy read it with me and she was like, I mean, yeah, but I'm really bad at buddy reads. And I was like, same. So I don't know if it'll actually happen, but I know we're both excited about it. And that's going to be These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. I was hyped about this when I got it in the book of the month last month and I'm still hyped about it now. Basically, this is a Romeo and Juliet retelling and it sounds awesome because it's two rival gangs. We have the White Flowers and we have the Scarlets and they've been fighting ever since, well, forever. And they've always been at equal levels of power and they've always just been up against each other. But specifically we have Juliet and Roma who are in the rival gangs and they were each other's first love. And Roma was also Juliet's first betrayal, so there's that. We not only have a gang blood feud, but now we have a lover's feud, which is gonna be fun in general, because they have to team up. Because as their gangs start like really colliding and losing speed as they go up against each other, the city that they live in starts to go a little mad. There's some sort of contagion, there's a madness that's spreading around, and if the gangs don't team up, they're gonna go down too, and they need to figure out what's going on to be able to solve it. So Rome and Juliet are just gonna have to put it aside, I guess, or maybe uh, make up, kiss and make up, maybe love to hate. We love to see it. Hate to love, actually, I guess. Love to hate to hate to love. <laughs> but I'm hyped about it either way. It just sounds like it's gonna be really cool and fun. Just like a good twist on the classic Romeo and Juliet. I hope it doesn't end like the classic Romeo and Juliet because that is the one thing I despise about the original story, but we'll talk about that another day. So hopefully Mika and I are able to actually buddy read that this month as well as me reading all of these other books. I really feel like I'm extra motivated to read these this month just because I mean I I went through the effort of you know putting on my big girl pants and reaching out to people I don't really talk to. I mean not not from like not wanting to I just you know I don't talk to people but also for their added effort of actually you know coming up with lists for me to actually read so I feel motivated. I'm hoping that we have a great reading month. The main reason why I wanted someone else to pick my TBR is because I kind of knew what I wanted for this month is just to finish all the books that are on my books that I was supposed to read this year list and that's not necessarily what I really really wanted for this month. I knew that that was something that in the back of my head I wanted but at this point I don't think I'm me I'm meeting my Goodreads goal anyways this month unless something magical happens and I read like 40 books. So because that was blocking my creative TBR juices, I 
I'm actually really excited that I was able to reach out to other people and get these different recommendations that I'm sure are gonna be a really good time. So thank you specifically to the booktubers that helped me out and yeah, I guess thank you for watching this as well. Um, I mean, no, definitely thank you for watching this. If you've made it to the end, I am still gonna be doing the emoji thing because I've just seen so many awesome responses of people being like, thank you so much for doing this because I've always wanted to comment but never knew what to do, so this is cool. So even if there's only a few people to a ton of people hating that, we're gonna do emojis. So if you want to leave an emoji, um, leave... Is there a paintbrush? Oh, ooh, let's check, let's check. Okay, there isn't a paintbrush, but there is a palette, like a paint palette. So we're gonna leave that down below in honor of my shirt. I, You guys, if you were wondering, um, this is the shirt that I was wearing actually in my follow me around day, vlog, day long vlog where I went book shopping. <laughs> I saw a ton of comments being like, she's wearing a Bob Ross shirt. And yes, not only is it Bob Ross, but to make it extra cool in my opinion, it's a rip and dip shirt. So he's, he's painting, he's painting I think his name's Nurm or Neural or something like that, but I mean it's the cat from Rip and Dip. I love Rip and Dip, so this shirt is awesome. And in honor of Bob Ross and and cats, we're gonna put a palette. <laughs> and I guess if you wanted to, put a cat emoji. But um, yeah, so that's gonna be it for this video today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had as much fun as I did. I feel like I had a lot of fun this video. So yeah. Um, it's literally so wild to me that we are in the end of 2020. I mean, I guess thank goodness because I don't know if a lot of us could handle more of 2020, but I guess 2021 is really just an extension, so I just don't want to think about that yet. But we're going into 2021, so expect a lot of end of the year videos. I am not participating in a Vlogmas in case anyone was wondering because, I mean, I get too stressed out for things like that. I can't, I can't upload a video every single day, obviously, but I just will be trying to upload as much as possible and definitely look forward to all of the end slash start of the year videos that should be popping up on my channel. And I wish us better luck for next year, am I right? That's gonna be it for this video today, guys. I love y'all so, so much. I hope you're having a cool holiday. Um, if you saw my bullet journal, we all know that I'm a Grinch, so I, that's, I mean, my Halloween decorations are still up. I need to end this video. I love y'all so, so much. Stay safe. Have a happy time. Goodbye. Hey everyone, it's me again, Brittany, and I... I have to do the thumbnail. Wait, okay, let me... Ignore the lighting because my ring light, it's, it's totally giving out on me. Oh shoot, I forgot the thing that I was gonna say. Wait, okay, I need to think about it. Ooh. I made a tea before this video because I was like, I'm so thirsty, I'm gonna want to drink the entire time. I forgot about it until now. Oh, wow, that's a good tea. Mmm. That's a good tea. That's a really good tea. Oh, oh, oh. Wow, this is, this is really what I did this for. I was just gonna say that if you need better summaries or anything like that, that I always link the things in the description bar below, so... Check down there for any links. Wow, that's, that's why I did this. This is why... I'm sorry. <laughs> it's coconut banana foster and coconut creme brulee mixed together because I go to this, there's a tea place across my, from where I work. Um, this was a fun TBR, right? Like, I mean, the fact that I literally only own one book is just besides the point. I, I feel like there was something, oh my god, I forgot to say, okay, wait. I wish I could find it on my shelves. That would assist. But yeah, that's that's it. That's definitely it now. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>